In this clip I will discuss some applications of the main theorem of calculus. For instance, take a function fx equals x squared, and suppose we want to calculate the definite integral from 1 to 3 of fx dx. So this equals the integral 1 to 3 of x squared dx. Well, we know that f has a primitive, um, capital F equals 1 third x to the power 3, and so the main theorem of calculus states that we may evaluate the primitive in the boundary value. So the integral equals f3 minus f1, which equals 27 third minus 1 third equals 26 over 3. Yeah, so the theorem of calculus is very convenient in calculating definite integrals. So another example of a definite integral is the following, the integral from 0 to a half pi of the cosine of x dx. So a primitive is given by the sine of x, so that we make the, may take the difference of the sine of a half pi minus the sine of 0, which is denoted like, that, like so. So this is the sine of a half pi minus the sine of 0, which of course equals 1. Well, a different kind of example is where we have functions with a variable, a variable bound, so boundary. So, for instance, g of x equals the integral from 0 to x squared of e to the power t dt. Now, suppose we want to calculate the derivative of this function. We can do it in two by two methods. The first method is that we actually calculate the the integral as if it were a definite integral with a boundary upper bound x squared. So we know that e to the power t has as a primitive e to the power t, so we may evaluate this primitive in the outside values, in the boundary values. So we get e to the power x squared minus e0, which equals e to the power x squared minus 1. So the derivative can be calculated directly by just taking the derivative of e to the power x squared minus 1, so we get e to the power x squared minus the derivative of x squared, which equals 2x. So we get 2x times e to the power x squared, since the minus 1 vanishes. Well, a different method uses the main theorem of calculus in, in a different way. So we may find, first we may define a primitive of the function e to the power t, ex, which is given by capital F, and uh, then realize that g of x is simply the f of x squared. Yeah? If we substitute x squared for x, we get g of x. So we may also find the derivative by taking the derivative of g, which is now found using the chain rule for differentiation, So, which is the f prime of x squared times 2x. Two, two but since we know that capital F is the primitive of is a primitive of e to the power x squared, we can just plug in e to the power x squared times 2x.